What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and I'm here to explain the ABL, that's right, the Alpha Battle League to you guys. Of course, the ABL was spun off by the, um, it's kind of, it's, well, Tactical Monkeys is the one who really started this one. I think he had some help from some other people, but he is the main person who started it. So, of course, with the ABL, another new league. Leagues are really fun to participate in. If the ABL does have a season two, I'll be sure to post information on how to get involved with that. But what makes this league unique is that for drafting purposes, you draft three Pokemon from each tier. So, of course, OU, UU, RU, and NU. Um, of course, I am the Eterna City Enders once again. That was actually a pretty fun draft. Uh, I approached this draft once again wanting to use things that I either they're my favorites or just things that I don't get to use very often. And of course, what's the polar opposite of Venusaur if not Charizard? Uh, so Charizard, Mega Charizard X, as a matter of fact, was the first Pokemon I bred. Um, in particular, I went ahead and drafted him because I saw that um, Mega Metagross and Sableye were both drafted in the first and second rounds. And Mega Charizard actually could take on both of those pretty well with Mega Altaria being something that Mega Charizard can take on to an extent just because he takes neutral damage from the fairy type attacks. Uh, and, of course, I'm not going to switch him in on a dragon type move. But he can hit back pretty hard with the right coverage. So, I just wanted to kind of approach the draft from that regard. Uh, I chose Clefable and Gengar as my other two OU Pokemon. Number one, we all know the the general creepypasta theory that Clefable and Gengar are related because Gengar is Clefable's shadow or the evil version of Clefable or something like that. So I thought that that was cool. I haven't actually used Gengar in a while. And Clefable I use in the Indigo League of Legends. Um, of course, being involved in multiple leagues, my time to breed is cut down by working 40 to 50 hours a week. So I wanted to use something that I did have some Pokemon available for to breed with. Or were already bred, rather. Because uh, I knew I would need to breed some char uh, some more Charmanders for Mega Charizard X. Uh, so I was pretty happy with getting those two. Just in OU alone, these three are able to handle so many of these threats that were drafted. Uh, and of course, I'm in the Temporal Division, so if there's ever a cross-divisional match, things will be a little bit different. But Clefable can just check so many of these Pokemon, barring coverage. I think the only things here that Clefable can't really handle are, of course, Bisharp and Caesar, and to a lesser extent, um, Heatran and Mega Venusaur. Uh, otherwise, Clefable can run Fire-type moves to catch them on the Switch. Uh, other Pokemon, like a Paladon, don't really mind Clefable, but those Pokemon don't like dealing with Charizard and Gengar. So, I was feeling really good about my first three drafts. Um, from there, I kind of planned what I wanted for Yu Yu. I wanted Porygon 2, because I needed to start getting some more defensive Pokemon to match up well with Clefable, of course, Porygon being weak to fighting types, and uh, Clefable resisting fighting types. Works out very well. Also, the Trace ability, very nice just for general utility. It allows me to soften some Pokemon up using uh, Intimidate or, of course, getting Levitate and things like that. Uh, to a lesser extent, you can run Porygon 2 with the ability Analytic, which raises the power of its special moves by 30% if it moves last or if the opposing Pokemon switched out. So it allows me to have a little bit of an offensive presence as well. Hydreigon allows me to have that very nice dragon type spam with Charizard and of course Hydreigon does get some nice coverage options and he allows me to U-turn in and out. Um, this between Hydreigon and Gengar also just good general coverage there. Gengar can take on the fairies that Hydreigon hates and Hydreigon can take on all the wonderful ghost types that Gengar doesn't really do want to deal with so I like that composition there. And just for Stealth Rocks because I generally don't like running Stealth Rocks on Clefable unless I absolutely have to, I decided to go ahead and draft Empoleon he does compound my uh, fighting weakness with Porygon 2, but I highly doubt I'm going to bring Empoleon and Porygon 2 to the same battle, unless my opponent just lacks all fighting types altogether. Now for RU, that was going to be where I really got into some of my favorites. Hitmontop, Drapion, and Rotom Moform. Three of my favorite Pokemon, especially for their individual types. Uh, Hitmontop gave me access to a reliable spinner, some priority if I needed, and of course an Intimidator. Uh, Drapion gives me some nice defensive and offensive options. Drapion only being weak to a ground type really assists this team overall with synergy. And of course he gives me another poison type 
offense to take on some of these other fairies that were, of course, very popular to be drafted. Drapion can also pursue trap psychic types, which is pretty nice, and lay up toxic spikes. So now I have some nice entry hazards in Stealth Rocks and Toxic Spice if I see more bulky teams that I'm going up against. And of course, Rotom Mo form or Rotom Cut is my favorite Rotom form. And I didn't have any grass types up until that point. And so he gives me a grass type and an electric type, which is just going to be generally good for spamming Leaf Storm or if I need to use Volt Switch in conjunction with U-Turn from Hydreigon, I have that option as well. Now moving into NU, of course, NU was going to be a pretty interesting, um, I guess, tier overall, because just you can see the variety of Pokemon that were drafted in the NU area, and I felt very comfortable drafting Yuxi and uh, or Uxi and Kabutops. My last pick was Swellow was kind of random. I noticed I didn't have any flying type coverage, and I've done well with Swellow before. I have a little bit of experience using that one. Uh, Kabutops is just one of my top three favorite Pokemon of all time just right behind Venusaur, basically. And, of course, Yuxi is my favorite Lake Spirit Pokemon, my favorite Psychic type as well. And Yuxi is going to give me the opportunity to have good general utility and defensive pivot if I need it. It can run screens, it can set up rain for Kabutops if I need it to, it can set up uh, entry hazards, and it can also run Heal Bell, or just run Psychic coverage with a more bulky Psychic Pokemon. Uh, Kabutops is nice because he gives me some much-needed priority, my only other priority here, of course, is going to be hit him on top, but water priori priority is nice, especially up against um, some of these other Pokemon like Heatran, because the, the fighting type priority, I'd rather run him on top as defensive generally. Uh, Kabutops can also run a very nice uh, Swords Dance type set, paired with the rain from Yuxi, that's something worth considering, and of course Kabutops can spin and set up entry hazards if needed, but since I have Empoleon and him on top, I don't really think I'll be using Kabutops in that way too often. Uh, and of course, Swellow, just throw a Toxic Orb on it and spam Facade and Brave Bird until you're to your heart's content, basically. So this is the this is the Alpha Battle League. Um, I've actually, when I'm making this video, I'm trying to get caught up with my uploads. So I've already had my first three battles in this league. So I'll be getting those caught up this week after you guys see this video. But I did just want to give you an overview, kind of explain the rules to you. It's pretty basic on the rules. Um, as far as the random sleep claws, uh, evasion, one hit KO, moody claws, all those are pretty standard. This league does allow Blaze, Blaziken, Aegislash, and Greninja with only its X and Y movesets. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. I actually don't know if anyone in my roster drafted those Pokemon. Because I don't, yeah, no one here drafted Blaziken. No one drafted Aegislash. And no one drafted Greninja. So I won't have to worry about that here. That might be an issue over in the Spatial Division uh, where we actually do see Aegislash. So that's something to keep in mind too. But yeah, so a little bit of an interesting spin there. More Pokemon to choose from, three from each tier. Look forward to the Alpha Battle League. And uh, shout outs to Tactical Monkeys for starting the league. I hope you guys enjoy my uploads from it. And I'll be getting caught up with the LBA as well. So we'll talk to you guys later and have a great day.